o'clock. It is time for Real News with Brian Ross. Brian joins us on a Thursday morning, uh, and we take a look uh, on what's going on on the landscape of news. Not that there's much going on, Brian, at all. <laughs> oh, my goodness. What a uh, cascade of uh, very troubling uh, developments. Uh, uh, as you mentioned, uh, the, the hurricane, uh, the pandemic has not gone away. Economic crisis, we don't know what's going to happen in our schools. And we've got quite the convention going on uh, virtually on the Republican uh, official channel of Fox News. It's, you know, it's just a, 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 a very strange time. And we even have so much convoluted, uh, and this is where politics, and it's probably both parties' fault, uh, but politics really gets in the way. Like yesterday, there was a news story that came out early in the morning about the CDC uh, changing their their thoughts on masks and protocol and things like that. And then, of course, we come to find out later in the afternoon that, no, that did not come from the CDC on up. It came from the White House on down. And I said, you know, okay, that's definitely politics playing a part here. But both parties have been really edging in on this uh, over the course of the past 20 years anyway. But things are just very convoluted when it comes to separating uh, the power base that you might have in Washington and then taking what's meant to be quasi-independent organizations and forcing your rule on them. Well, as you know, uh, America is built into our DNA, a healthy mistrust of government and anyone who wants to infringe on what we think are our liberties and tell us what to do. At the same token, we are a community, and we have to act in the best interest of everyone, not just ourselves. Uh, you know, as I watch uh, last night and the last couple of nights of the Republican convention, uh, essentially they're saying chaos is coming if you elect uh, Joe Biden. And they have proceeded to spell a, a, spin a story that is not true in the least about uh, all that's happening in the so-called Democrat cities and uh, this notion that uh, if you elect Joe Biden, uh, it'll be chaos across the country and you won't be able to live safely in your homes. You'll, you'll need a gun like uh, that couple from St. Louis to fend them off. You know what's interesting about that, and I haven't, wa I didn't watch any of the Democratic uh, convention live, and I haven't watched any of the Republican convention. But with that line of topic, you can't have any more crisis in the streets than having a teenage boy who was a member of a, a, a group uh, of of, uh, of of teenagers uh, that wanted to become police officers, uh, walking the streets with a semi-automatic rifle, uh, and uh, shooting two unarmed protesters. I mean, I think to me. Uh, protesters who who do violence and uh, they're not protesters; those are rioters. That's one. But when the police and it took them two days to arrest the guy, uh, when somebody is uh, is allowed to go out with their own gun and shoot unarmed protesters, and and what well, it. I'm clearly, you know, clearly, he's not allowed to, and uh, you know, I'm troubled, for instance, by what uh, Mr. Tucker Carlson had to say about this um, last night on Fox News, that can you blame a teenager for trying to impose order when the police fail to, essentially? Like justifying that as, a, as an effort to bring order. That's, that's, that's so far uh, beyond the pale, uh, and yet that seems to be uh, a very popular position among Mr. Carlson and his, uh, those who follow him. You know, I, 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 it's... it's... The, the, my grandmother used to say it uh, all the time. There's an old expression, uh, the, the, the world has gone to hell in a handbasket. <laughs> and, and really, when you look around, uh, this country is so disorganized. If ever there was a time for a foreign power to take advantage of our weaknesses, uh, it is right now. Uh, we are probably at the, at the weakest point as a country that we have been in, in I, don't, I can't remember when. Well, you know, every election year there is a sense of uh, instability as we fight over who should lead the country for the next four years, so, so that's a given. Uh, I think the one thing, of course, that would unify us is if some other country tried to definitely take advantage of it in a military way. Uh, frankly, that would be the sort of the scenario you know, of uh, wag the dog. Would, would there be an incident in which they would sort of uh, Americans would unify around the president to fight off the foreign power, you know? Someone said, you know, what, nothing uh, sort of unifies Earth as an attack by the Martians. So if there's an attack by some outside force, that will unify America. Uh, let's hope that's not the case and that no country is, uh, uh, you know, misguided enough to try to do that. So how do you see this, this campaign now unfolding after the convention's over, after uh, the, the Republicans are finished and the Democrats are finished? How do you see this unfolding over the course of the next 60-some-odd days? 
Well, uh, the race will tighten, as it always does after these conventions. You know, frankly, I think uh, both the Democrats and Republicans, uh, their goal with these uh, virtual conventions is to appeal to their uh, base supporters, rally them. And then the question will be uh, who can get out the vote, and that will be uh, in part the absentee ballots, the mail-in ballots we've heard so much about, and there'll be uh, attacks from both sides. Uh, it's nothing that we haven't seen before in any campaign. Uh, you know, how low can they go? I don't think the Trump campaign has any real barrier to go as low as possible. We've seen that in the convention. But the Democrats will take their own shots, too, at the Republicans. Uh, and I think, you know, there's a group in the middle there, uh, Marshall, you know, 10, 15 percent uh, at the most uh, of voters who have not decided who to vote for. And that's where they're going to go. It'll be interesting to see how it progresses. But, you know, I, I also tried to explain to somebody uh, just yesterday, um, and they said to me, well, isn't it, isn't it wrong that, that a president will dictate uh, what the CDC would do? And I, I, I said to, to them, well, listen, you know, is, is, it, is it ethical? Not, no, it's not. Uh, normally the president has these organizations to give him advice on, on what to do. Uh, not the president to give the CDC advice what to do, but uh, with political appointees and especially the way uh, this president has named so many uh, interim, part-time, you know, they're not fully uh, uh, cabinet officials that have been gone through the Senate. Senate right? yeah. uh, there, so he obviously has just loaded up with a lot of people that just will follow what he wants to do. And, and unfortunately, that's, that's, that's allowable in our form of government. Well, that's, in fact, that is how our government works. We have somebody in office there who runs the executive branch for four years, and then we get a referendum every four years on whether we liked what happened or we didn't. You know, in this case, the CDC was sort of changing the guidelines that essentially you don't need to get a test if you've been exposed to somebody for 15 minutes or more who then is positive. Just hang on and see if you have symptoms. Well, that's that's perhaps an arguable position. But given what President Trump has said is that more testing means uh, more positive cases, and therefore we look bad, he says, uh, then we have to wonder about the decision behind it. Uh, clearly not based on the science. Uh, Dr. Fauci was actually under general anesthetic having a polyp removed from his vocal cord at the time that the decision was made, I guess, very conveniently for the White House. Just uh, very strange times. Well, so we so we look ahead to the next uh, the next sixty days, and one thing I, I I hope, and I know it's 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 not Donald Trump is going to campaign like Donald Trump campaigns, but uh, I think one of the big mistakes uh, Hillary made, and even uh, at the time Bill Clinton was uh, very upset, uh, is that Hillary kept more up on the on the character attacks than 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 talking about basic economics and and what and what, what could happen in the country. I hope the Democrats. Uh, leave Donald Trump's character to Donald Trump uh, and just move on and just point out uh, the eight or ten major features uh, where he has failed and and rely on that as, as, as their bellwether. Right. And I think what you have to remember is that uh, for many people it does come down to the pocketbook. Uh, you know, Bill Clinton's famous uh, phrase during his campaign, it actually came from George Stephanopoulos, I think, uh, it's the economy, stupid. And uh, that will be, uh, in the end, for many people, uh, how they decide to vote. And uh, frankly, the economy is showing some signs of life. Uh, if there is a vaccine, and the White House seems to be pushing that as fast as it can, regardless of whether there are for proper protocols, um, you know, that would change a lot in terms of the economy. I think everyone who's in the, on the Wall Street agrees that if you don't have the health crisis under control, you don't have the economy under control. Uh, and that will be, I think, a, a, a turning point for many voters of those who haven't decided yet who they're going to vote for. They'll take a look at their uh, IRAs and their bank accounts and uh, see how they're doing. It's it's interesting when, when you see the effect that uh, – uh, at, 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 let's look at the way uh, presidents perform during during emergencies. Uh, and every president has at least one thing that they foul up. They don't get it right. Okay, uh, there's not a president that's 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 infallible. But when you take a look at the string of hurricane responses, you take a look at the responses to uh, the shootings. When you take a look at the responses uh, of the economy by the president, and you look at the pandemic responses, and you can see you see a pattern of just like it's almost like to the White House, these things are not major problems, and and they just move along on whatever path they're on. 
Well, the president tonight is scheduled to give his acceptance speech for the nomination uh, by the, his party for a second term as president. Uh, this could all change because of what's happening along the Gulf Coast with uh, Hurricane Laura. We'll see. Uh, you know, if there's a hope that he's optimistic and shows about the, the path ahead, uh, we've often been so disappointed. This is the president who talked about American carnage on his inauguration. Uh, so that's what the people I talk to expect to hear from the president. He can't help himself. Well, we've got uh, an interesting 60, 60 or so days. As, as somebody who's been in the news business for, for a while, Brian, um, does this concern you, what's going on in this country and reflect the world, or is maybe a little too much emphasis placed on it? Well, you know, we have to sort it out. It, it, we've had times before when the world seemed to be in chaos. You know, I, I remember 68, uh, you know, we had uh, essentially riots in the streets. Uh, Vietnam was going on. There was a flu that didn't receive much attention at the time that killed 100,000 people. Uh, you know, it, it, uh, everyone will sort it out, and we'll, we'll figure it out. There is a sense now that we are really being hit bad by a, a cascade of uh, crises that, you know, we really haven't seen in our lifetime. Uh, you know, the folks who live around here where we do, Marshall, uh, we feel some comfort because it hasn't quite directly hit us. Uh, but the rest of the world is uh, certainly watching to see how we respond. I think, frankly, in these kind of cases, you know, there is, uh, there's a bright light at the end of the tunnel, we'll, we'll, and somehow America will find it. All right. And uh, the last thing of the pictures you see of the White House now, uh, surrounded by cement barricades, barbed wire. <laughs> it is, it is a, such a depressing sight to see America's house not accessible even by view anymore. And imagine the joy we'll feel when the pain ends. You're absolutely right. It'll feel a lot better. <laughs> Brian, we'll speak to you next week. Great talking to you, Marshall. Take Have care. a good week. Okay. Uh, Brian Ross and uh, Real News here on Robin Hood Radio.